Well hello retro computing enthusiasts. Welcome back to my channel. Mike here. And once again I'm back to hacking my Nabu after taking about a week off to do some other stuff. Um, haven't made a whole lot of changes to the code but there is one important change you might notice. The cursor is now blinking. Yes and if I type um, yeah so we got a blinking cursor now so that's nice. And I have to say thank you to um, one of my viewers, Friendly Neighborhood Jesus Freak. Yes, that's his handle on YouTube, Friendly Neighborhood Jesus Freak. He mentioned in one of the comments on one of the um, previous videos about how to implement a blinking cursor without interrupts. And it's fairly simple and straightforward, so I went ahead and did it. Basically, every time we go through the get care um, routine, which is called every time through the main loop, um, I call another little subroutine now from get care called blink and what it does is it increments a counter that's stored in memory and when that counter gets to I think 3000 hex um, it just changes the cursor from an underscore to a space and then counts again and then after it counts 3000 hex times again it changes it back to an underscore so it's a simple simple way to do a blinking cursor I played around with the uh, with the counter value a little bit until I got a uh, um, a blink rate that I liked. You may like a faster or a slower one, but all you have to do is change the value in the code, and um, that can accommodate you really easy. So it's a pretty simple change. I'm not even going to bother releasing this version of the firmware for now because I want to make other changes to it before I make the next release. I'm in the process of adding stuff from my Jazz 80 monitor to it and it's kind of raw and rough right now and not everything's working. So I also wanted to point out one other change, uh, one answer to a question that came up in the last video. Let me show you something. So I hope you can read that number on there. The NABU is running off of a 28C256 EE prom now instead of my usual 28C64. So a question came up in the last video and I tried to answer it about whether or not, actually I couldn't answer it, I wasn't sure, about whether or not a higher density EEPROM would work in the NABU instead of the hard to get 28C64s. Um, and yes, apparently a 28C256 EEPROM will work, but there's, there's a gotcha here. Um, let me show you. Well, there's a couple of gotchas, potential ones anyway. Let me show you. The pinout on these two chips is remarkably similar except for pin 1 and pin 26. Now, pin 26 um, is VCC for the, the, the 4, 4K EEPROM that normally comes with the NABU. So that's going to be pulled high. So pin 26 is pulled high. As for pin 1, I don't know what the NABU exactly is doing with it. Um, it seems to float high, so it's in a definite state. So we can, we can work with that. Um, the only problem with that is, is since you've got the two high order address lines pulled high on the, uh, 27, on the 28C256, um, you can't put your code at zero in there, okay? You have to load your code up at 6,000 hex instead of at zero. And that's that's where the NABU will be reading it. It's thinking it's reading at zero at 6,000 hex, okay? But, the uh, yeah, the 28C256 does seem to work. Now, there's another little gotcha. Like I say, I'm not sure... What they are doing exactly with pin 1, I don't know if the NABU here is explicitly pulling it high with a pull-up resistor or if it just floats high over time. I have had some issues where when I cold boot this thing, when it's been off for a while, um, it doesn't work. But then when I either hit reset or restart the machine, it does work. So I'm thinking that maybe they're not explicitly pulling pin one high, it just floats high over time. And when you cold start the machine, sometimes it's not in the high state immediately when the CPU is trying to read from the EEPROM. 
and it goes off into La La Land. That's my best guess. I'm I'm certain that A13 is being pulled high because uh, that would have been BCC, like I said, for the e, for the EEPROM that came with the NABU. But what they're doing with pin one, no clue. It's really not showing up on the uh, schematics what they're doing with it. Um, it does seem to go high over time, but maybe initially on on cold startup, it's not there yet. So that's that's another potential little gotcha. But it does work. So if you can't get your hands on a uh, 28C64, a 28C256 does work, at least in my NABU. I don't know if all the boards are the same in all of the production units. Um, so try it at your own risk. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. So anyway, I will uh, keep working on this and hopefully in the next few days or week have another um, release of the firmware ready for you guys, okay? It'll be on my blog as per usual. Yes, I know people are saying I should put it on GitHub. I don't have a GitHub account. Haven't had time to check out GitHub. I My blog has been around since long before GitHub existed, and I've released a lot of software, blueprints, schematics, stuff on it over time. It's just the way I'm used to doing things, so sorry, you know, if you guys are more used to GitHub. I'm more used to just putting stuff out on my blog. Someday I'm sure I'll get a GitHub account, but for now, all this stuff's going on the blog. But I think I'm making good progress, and thanks again, um, Friendly Neighborhood Jesus Freak, for telling me how to make a uh, blinking cursor. Okay, well, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative, educational, inspirational, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. There'll be more Nabu hacking videos. I'm itching to get back to work on the Jazz 80 breadboard computer, and I've got some other projects that are coming along really soon, so subscribe to see those future videos. Check out my main channel, too, Omega Geek 64. There's always interesting stuff going on over there, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.